Hello, welcome to the Curious Crow podcast, episode number five. Myself, Martin Willingham. And me, Chris Borden. And me, Chris Borden. I'll get stuff. <laughs> it's normally me getting taken the mickey out of for the radio stuff, so it's someone else's turn. <laughs> That's my theory. I'll well, take it this once, mate. Uh, well, welcome to the program. Uh, the program. Welcome no. to the show. Uh, on this show, we're going to be talking about the SoundCloud problem. Yes, yes, uh, we are. That'll be the first thing we talk about, actually. Chester Bennington. Uh, a video games market in London that I went to uh, restoring old handhelds a Windows 10 update games of Game of Thrones spoilers yes and introducing to your your partner to your family a helpful guide <laughs> uh, this week as well Splatoon 2 Words of Friends I watched Spider-Man again um, Chris downloaded Stickman Fight and watched Hannibal um, and then also in the news North Corbeer and uh, Lion on the Road yeah I lie on the road quite often <laughs> Uh, lying to me right now. Uh, uh, so let's talk about the let's talk about the SoundCloud thing then, because uh, you've been listening to this podcast for the last five weeks now. We've reached our month. Congratulations! Woo. You all noticed that the podcast for a while wasn't on SoundCloud. This one will be, um, and SoundCloud and also the podcast app. The way we do it is uh, we have an RSS feed from SoundCloud that then goes to the Apple Podcast app, and then from the Apple Podcast app, it then goes on that app okay yes it does so what we've done is we will have the latest four episodes available to listen and download to on the apple podcast app and listen to on soundcloud oh. but there will be an archive of every program on our youtube channel lovely so the youtube channel will have an archive of everything the soundcloud will have the last four that's our way of not paying for it whilst it's unstable now should <laughs> things be fine later on we'll think about it but uh, well yeah, yeah definitely i mean obviously it's brought up in a previous co- podcast wasn't it it was the last um, one yeah it emoji w- will never be as big as rag and bone man oh that's but it's my turn this week it is your turn this right, week okay. to the episode <laughs> okay um You've got the entire episode, though, so you'll be all right. Um, yes. But yeah, obviously, because we want, we want to uh, get this podcast on as many platforms as humanly possible, but until we know the future of SoundCloud, it's 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 difficult for us to turn around and go, yep, okay, let's put everything on there. Yeah. Especially when it's so uncertain. And there's money involved. The, exactly. The simple version is there's money involved. Um, yeah, um, it seems like we do this every week, but let's talk about something sad. Um, Lincoln Park have released their first official statement after the death of former frontman Chester Bennington last week. Uh, the statement says, Our hearts are broken. The shock waves of grief and denial are still sweeping through our family as we come to grips with what has happened. So, for those who didn't know, uh, Chester Bennington uh, died aged 41 after committing apparent suicide. Um, he leaves behind six children and a wife. Um, so yeah, we're expecting to see them big in the charts this week. Obviously, definitely. Um, Spotify chart is showing Lincoln Park. Mm. Um, I just my, my first interaction with Lincoln Park, um, you know, in the end, is is my fir- is my first memory of Lincoln Park. Is it? Yeah, quite late to the game, I think, with Lincoln Park. See, I, th- I think I probably was as well, because my first, my first song that I, I remember distinctly from Lincoln Park was Numb. Great song. Love that Great song. Great song. I've actually, actually listened to it this morning. Um, yeah. I mean, obviously, our, our thoughts are with, are with Chester's family. Of course. Um, and it's really sad. We have. This seems like we're doing this every week. It does, doesn't it? It and, is... Uh, it seems that it's a terrible time at the moment, and obviously, th- this podcast is about us trying to, you know, bring a bit of sunlight into into the world a little bit. Yeah, and it's just it's so hard when such awful things are happening to people who, you know, well, for, for, for those of us in, in the public, you know, uh, it's. Uh, it's terrible because he seemed like a fantastic bloke and uh yeah and it, it, this it, is, i think it came as such a surprise though didn't it really and what i'd like to do and i'm sure chris joins me in this is is just take an opportunity to talk about um getting help definitely um, if you need help um if if you are suffering like chester was battling with the ideas of suicide with depression um there are people that can help you um, of course there are. In the UK, um, we have the Samaritans. 
And I'm going to give that number out right now. Do it. Which is 116123. That's 116123 from a mobile or a landline. If you're in the Republic of Ireland, it's 116123. Same number. Um, and if you go on Lincoln Park's website, if you're listening to us in different parts of the world, you can go onto Lincoln Park's website and there they have a list of various organizations around the world that you can speak to. Don't feel like you're on your own. Don't feel like you can't have help. And, you know, I think we can obviously talk forever about Chester's work Indeed and Lincoln could. Park. We could, we could literally fill this hour with it. Um, and then some. And then some. But I feel it's appropriate that we, we leave it with... It's sad. It's just sad. And um, if you're suffering the same, please don't. There are people that can help you. There are people that care. And, you know, one of the biggest things you can do, you might not feel like it, is talking about it. And, uh, you know, I've I've had some stuff before, but n- nothing on that level, I'll be honest. And uh, talking about it is a brave thing to do. Mm, agreed. But it's the good thing to do. Um, so, yeah. That's that's just for that. But back to uh back to Lincoln Park as well. I don't know what they're gonna do from here, if they're gonna carry on. No. If they're gonna stop, we don't know. But uh yeah. A great voice, a great talent. Um and he'll be missed. Very much so. Um let's talk about something else. Yes, definitely. Um Well now, obviously you went up to London the other day, didn't you? I did. I did. I went to the London Games Market, which Ooh. was in Russell Square in London. London and uh, a little wander around there. I wish I'd filmed it now, but I didn't. They had like video games and board games, like retro video games. I bought some stuff. Of course you did. Not that much though, because I'm just a poor boy from a poor family. I bought uh, Road Avenger for the Mega CD, <laughs> Le Mans for the PlayStation Three. Yeah, of course, PlayStation you three, PlayStation of course one, you did. Sorry, PlayStation One. Of course uh, you did. I also bought a shell for my Game Boy Color. A new <gasps> shell. You mean one of the originals? The original Game Boy Color? Yeah, I, I saw it for a tenner and I was like, why not? Let's give it a go. Put it on. Oh my God, that thing looks brand new. It looks brand new. It's a really nice condition. Now, there will be a series coming soon on the channel where we look at my collection. So yes. it will feature... Martin's Cupboard. Martin's Cupboard. We haven't decided what we're going to call it yet. Martin's Cupboard. I don't want to call it Martin's Cupboard. I think we should call it Martin's Cupboard. We shouldn't call it uh, Martin's and, Cupboard. And just... Can I do the voice The voice start for it? So as it, as you know, the graphics and stuff come in, it just got me going, Martin's Cupboard. No. That's no, a shame. No, no, no. That's a shame. Well, <laughs> it's your feature, mate. It's your feature. I think, personally, it'll be phenomenal. But what, can, you know, uh, what, uh, what do I know? Well, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> But just having to talk about Martin's Cupboard. I don't know if that's, that's what I want. Uh, anyway, <laughs> but yeah, so that was cool. That was really cool. It was nice to hang out with fellow nerds. I re-downloaded Pokemon Go. Good. I haven't put that on the running order, um, but I played Pokemon Go, and uh, it's changed a bit. Has it? Yeah, it's changed a bit. It's got some new stuff, um, but I'm not. <laughs> I'm still not really into it. That's I'll play it, 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 it got some spare time. But it's no. quite funny because obviously last year there was a point where our little friendship group, the majority of us were all pretty into it. Yeah. Like pretty into it. And obviously a couple of weeks ago we mentioned that obviously we had a barbecue and our friend Turkey. Still playing it. Still plays it. He hasn't it. stopped. It's because he is a real trooper. He is a game warrior. He loves it. Of course he does. I mean, to, to be fair, I mean... I think actually thinking on it, my first well, my first Nintendo game was Pokemon. It was it was oh what was it? It was Pokemon Crystal. I was quite late to the game. Oh, because I've got the original three in the cupboard there, and they're not they're not like ones I bought since. They're my childhood copies. Ah, that's that's kind of sweet. The batteries in them have gone though, so I need to replace those. Okay. Uh, but yeah, no, not, not I, that's job. <laughs> it's not a great job. No, but t- t- so with obviously the games convention, did you see anything? What well, was it? All retro, or was it oh, and all board yeah. games, or was it all? Were there like bits mix. of modern here and there? It was a mix. There was bits of everything, and um, there were Pokemon cards. I bought some Pokemon cards as well. Oh my What's god, wrong with me? Um, and I, I got some bits and pieces there. Um, I saw in the flesh some original Xbox developer kits, development kits, dev kits. Are you kidding? No, I saw them in the flesh, and I said, how much are your dev kits? 
And he goes, I don't really know. I haven't really got a price on them. And I went, what do you reckon, though? And he goes, about 400 quid. Ooh. And I went, well, if you'd have said 40, then maybe we'd have been in business, baby. <laughs> 400 pounds. The worst bit about that entire sentence was, I can't imagine you turning around to a stranger and calling them baby. Yes. Um, <laughs> 400 <laughs> quid. Blimey. It's a lot of money. I also saw, an, um, um, yeah, you might not know whether this is quite obscure, an Amiga CD32 for 170 pounds. And if you know Ooh. what one of them is, Massive respect. Um, but I saw loads of stuff. The problem with the games market at the minute is it's just so inflated. The cost. Oh, God, yeah. The only consoles I feel safe collecting games for at the minute are the Xbox, the PS2, and the GameCube. Even the GameCube's started to go high now. Yeah, of course, as well. GameCube I mean. consoles have started to go high, which is weird considering. Let's just say you're interested in just the games. You, yeah. you don't care about the consoles. Buy a Wii. They're like fourteen pounds. Buy a Wii. Buy a Wii. Play GameCube games on that. It's yeah. fully backwards compatible. Every GameCube title works on the Wii. You know, you can plug GameCube controllers into it. No worries. It's all backwards compatible. It all works. Do you Don't reckon, buy GameCube. Do you reckon Nintendo kind of foresaw it coming? What this? Yeah, oh. this, this, this issue that we're currently experiencing because obviously, because I, I got you gave me as a present one year, I believe. PlayStation One, yeah, and I, I I found my 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 original copy of the Amazing Spider Man Two, I think it was just Spider Man Two, didn't you? Yeah, Spider Man Two, yeah, that's the one. And I was like, oh, okay, that's cool. I thought, do you know what? I'm gonna have a look online for a few of the PlayStation One games. I thought, you know, old console, okay, there might be a bit. Old, but not too old. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so I thought, you know, I I, I thought I'd have a look. And I couldn't believe it. Some of them were, you know, 20, 30 quid. Yeah. And I was sat there It's going, amazing. I don't have the money for that. A few years ago, genuinely, back, just before 2010 rocked around and reared its ugly head, um, I was I was sat there going, oh, look at that. You know, walking into game and all the rest of it. They still had PlayStation 1 games on sale. And they were, they were pence. Yeah, they, they were literally, literally, literally 99, like 50 pence. 99p a quid. A couple yeah, of quid something like that. Wish uh, I wish I was back in them days. Oh, yeah, you and me both. And I'm just sat there going, now though they're raking it in. You'll notice raking it in. You'll notice that my collection hasn't really had any additions for a while because it's expensive. It is expensive. And the ones that I don't have are the really expensive ones. Oh god, yeah. Those are the ones I don't have. Do you know what I actually I was thinking on this the other day because the one I looked up online, yeah, the original Crash Bandicoot. Yeah, that's so that much has money. skyrocketed, and I don't know whether that's because of the recent release of the remastered game Probably. or well, what. But I think people, people, you know, people have just got to that right age now, and nostalgia's in. And like nostalgia's yeah. kicked in, and also being a geeky nerd like we are <laughs> is all right now. It's cool. Yeah, it used to be a bit like oh, I don't want to be like that. But and also, I was, I was, it was nice to see. I wish there were more women at this market. It was nice to see women just. Yeah just being there like it's like finally you know we're, we're getting there I think there should be more women playing games because I don't think video games are for boys no. I think video games are for everybody so you, people. Could, you, you, you could be a mouse and still play a video game and I'm sure uh, shut up yeah probably in a lab test somewhere get, 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 get a mouse just put it on your twitch yeah <laughs> And just like have it pressing random buttons on the Game Boy or something. Yeah, exactly. And then uh, stream that for a few hours. It'd be great. But yeah, so it was nice. I liked it a lot. It'll come around next year. I'm sure I'll go. They <laughs> they made a mistake. This oh. thing needs to be after payday, like the day after payday. Because then they would have, honestly, they would have raked in the money. I saw some really cool stuff. That the, the same place I bought the Game Boy shells from. Oh, yeah. They were selling fully refurbished, backlit mod Game Boys for like Ooh. £80. Pounds. See, my first Game Boy was Game Boy Advanced. Game Boy Advance. Yeah. I had an SP. Well, back in, obviously back in the day, uh, back in my day, um, we, my family and I couldn't actually afford a brand new, fully functioning Game Boy Color when right. they first came out. Yeah. And then obviously as time went on and, you know, games became, well, gaming consoles and things and handhelds, etc. became more of a thing. Yeah. Game Boy Advance then obviously walked onto the scene. As, as did 2001. Indeed. 
and that's just when I was moving, well, preparing, I think, to move up to secondary school, I think. Wow. Could have been, well, it was something like that. It's a while ago um, now, then. Yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> a very, very young Christopher loved his Game Boy Advance. There are teenagers older than that time. Oh, God, don't. Stop it. I'm already feeling old. They were born in 2001, they'd be 16. You, when, uh, speaking of other day. Yeah. Speaking of other day. Um, other day. My, my girlfriend came down from London. T-Dog. Indeed. And I really hope she doesn't mind me calling Do you know what? Oh, I don't think she does. If she did, I'd I'd be dead by now. Um, <laughs> but she, in front of my family, bearing in mind first time meeting them properly, yeah, called me old, right? Yes. My sister then joins in and agrees, and then my mum and dad don't say anything. So I'm sat there thinking, am I old? Am I? Because they all ganged up on me. Well, I was the yeah, butt of the joke. No, I normally get ganged up. I know how it feels. Yeah, I exactly. Know how it feels. I just sat there, felt, and it, but it's, it was all in good, all in good sport. Obviously, just before we talk about your parents, your girlfriend, which yes. we'll get onto in a minute. Indeed. Um, I just want to say on the, on the console mod in front, I also recapped, so I changed all the capacitors in my Sega Game Gear. Oh. I've had a kit for it lying around for a while and haven't done it. I did it yesterday. Got the soldering iron out and burnt myself. Oh, yeah. classy. Uh, well actually, you can see the you can see the little blister. It's a little tiny blister. Oh, yeah. But it yeah, really hurt. <laughs> I bet it did. It's the tiny... I just caught it with the tip of my finger, which means that touching Ow. anything for about you know, a couple of days is painful. But yeah, I did that yesterday. And I ordered a new shelf for my Game Boy Advance, which is turned up literally just before we recorded this. Duh. So I know what I'm up to later. So Chris, um, yes. let's, let's talk about Windows 10. Yeah, indeed. What's yeah. up with Windows 10? I like Windows 10 as a Mac user the vast majority of the time. Uh, I, I've come around to Windows 10 and I, I, you know, I wouldn't be upset if my Mac went pop. I think I'd be okay with Windows now. Yeah. Well, do you know what? I, I've always been a Windows user. Yeah. I, I really like Windows 10 because it kind of, the format kind of takes me back to, you know, XP. Yeah. Actually, it, yeah. In, a, in a lot of ways. And it's, it's, it's quite nice because sim- it's simplistic. I think it large, I think it works quite well. Yeah, actually. I think it does. It doesn't break down. It really does. However, the update that I don't know if it's been plaguing anyone else or maybe I'm just behind in the time because I was in Wales um, and the internet connection on there was horrendous. Yeah. Um, but for months, it's been bugging me saying, oh, Windows Update want to update your security stuff, yeah. like your security software and things like that. And it's been going on and on and on and on. And then the, today I woke up and I went, do you know what? It's probably about time I did it. So I opened up my laptop, turned on my PC and I clicked the update button. Right. And just before you arrived, they both finished. And I was like, oh, cracking. Nice. Give it a shot. Yep, yep, yep. So I start doing a few things, start typing up. And by God, it's so slow. Like, really? my, my, like my laptop was kind of slow anyway because it's an old machine now. That can play Fallout 4. That can play Fallout 4, you know, built built and produced and released in, I think it was 2012, and still plays Fallout 4, better than my PC. That actually boots up. Um, and, yeah, so I was so I just doing, doing, shifting some files about, yeah, deleting yeah. some stuff. What you do? And it was so slow. And I was sat there going, hmm. Hang on, I'll turn it off and turn it back on again. You know, that old chestnut. So yeah. I did. And do you know what? It was even slower when it turned back on. And wow, I went, that's what weird. is going on? So obviously I had a look at the files and everything, and barely anything's been changed. So I don't know what the bloody hell Microsoft had done, but they're messed with my machines. I'm not happy. Well, I can tell you that this one's running fine. I've got, I've got one oh, here. What is it? Uh, I'll talk about this quickly. I'm actually exporting No Mercy 24 in its entirety. Mm. You might have thought, oh, that'd be easy to do. You just stick the OBS record. Why aren't I doing that? I don't know, mate, honestly. Just I might cancel this render. Uh, but it's rendering at the minute. In fact, you probably can hear it, actually. I'm going to just, just do this. I don't know if you can hear that very well. It wasn't very loud. Yeah, I heard but it. My PC is like... <laughs> in the minute. It's had that update, and it's running fine. See, uh, but then again, it is a fairly 
high powered machine it is yeah it is, it is, it is it's, it's noisy but that's because of all the bits and pieces that need to run through it and get it's got, it and it's got, sort a, it and got a big GTX 960 graphics card in it as well big turbo edition um, and for, again in layman's terms it makes the machine run good it makes um, it makes games happen it makes the thing I um, actually built a PC for my landlord not long after and get and got him a better graphics card for the same price can you imagine how oh. pissed off I am about that yeah I, I actually remember I was here when that discussion happened uh, I put um, a GTX 1050 in the bloody thing um, it's a better card this yeah. is Frankly, BS. So, uh, anyway, sorry. No, that's uh, all right. So you're just struggling with it then? It's not yeah, working? pretty much. So it's, you, it's, it's just proven to be a bit of a pain in the bum. You want comments saying, I'm having it too. You just don't want to feel like it's your computer that's a part of shit. You want to you wanna validate yourself. Yeah, pretty much. I, I would like to be able to turn around and go, yeah, other people are experiencing this problem as well as me, but uh, I highly doubt it. Um, people are telling me that there was someone who's like oh well they won't update my computer someone who doesn't know my computer oh okay. my computer won't update anymore they, I was told in the PC shop that I need to get another one because it won't work anymore I was like how old is your computer uh, three four years old I was like no I'll be fine yeah Window, I, I've got Windows 10 running on a Core 2 Duo <laughs> with four gig of RAM bloody hell absolutely fine it's my server which is built now it's, it's finished and it is Pretty bloody cool. But yeah, Core 2 Duo running with 4 gig of RAM and it works perfectly. Exactly. And it's old. It's an old HP machine. It's in a new it's case, it. but it's an old HP machine. Yeah. And it was fine. So that's a load of baloney. But yeah, exactly. I, uh, Windows updates, sometimes w Microsoft has this brilliant thing and a problem. Yes. They are obsessed with backwards compatibility. Yeah, which means that it gets a little bloated sometimes, and they have to choose what to let go sometimes. I and they think often that's the possibly what's thing. happened. Obviously, we're expecting another big, 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 big update. Creators update. Indeed, we are in October. Is there's there's an update to the creators update in October. I can't oh, remember okay. what it's called. Nah, but either way, this is running the latest version of it, and uh, I like Windows 10. I like Windows lot. 10. In fact, my next laptop, because I've got an Apple MacBook Pro, mm. um, which is about five years old, so it means it's about right for Apple to drop it. Yep. I think they will at some point soon they'll just go nah your PC is no longer supported by the OS and then yes. and then what I'll do I'll buy a Windows gaming laptop that's what I'll do for my editing needs because mm. I'm moving away from it anyway um, yeah Windows 10 update weird so uh, but that's do you know what that's not the only thing that's irritated me this week and the other week <laughs> do you know what else has is it people ruining things? It is people ruining things. In fact, it's the Game of Thrones spoilers. Bastards. Now, I know you're not a massive fan of it. I'm not, but I totally appreciate what you said. Because we well, talked about it earlier. I totally exactly. appreciate what you're saying. Um, obviously, I know that some people will have have Sky. Hang on a second. Like there's a jingle for this. Chris's rant of the week. <laughs> it's your turn. It is my turn. Um, I said last week it was going to be my turn. Um, and it is. <laughs> but yeah, no... At the moment, going on Facebook or anything like that, especially if you're a Game of Thrones fan, is absolutely deadly. Because if you haven't seen anything of the new series, which was released two weeks ago, I believe, um, then you're probably in for a horrible awakening. Because the amount of spoilers I've seen, memes, I, l I love a good meme, but my God, can you not do something? Can you not do it with something that is so bloody new that not everyone has access to all of the time? Because it ruins it for other people. I'm sat here not knowing what's going on and saying, "Oh, this is really funny from this bit of the of the new season." <laughs> I'm sat there going, "Will you piss off? Yeah. I haven't seen it yet. <laughs> I haven't seen it. I, I want to be able to watch it." And, uh, but but no, no. Everyone decides to spoil it. How do you watch it? You're not going to answer that question, are you? I wait. To be fair, I tend to wait until the season comes out on DVD. Right. So you've really got to wait a while. Yeah, I've got, I've got to wait until at least next year. Because I do have Sky. And I do have Sky Atlantic. Oh. But I don't give a shit about Game of Thrones. Exactly. I know you don't. You heathen. I don't um, even use my Sky. Well, that's that. No. Very rarely. Do you know what? Actually, speaking of Game of Thrones, obviously, for, for those, those people that do listen and are fans of Game of Thrones... It makes me laugh because... I think they're fans of us then for a second. Uh, uh, no, <laughs> we, we don't have fans, We've got mate. one fan. Uh, who's that? Tamara. Yeah. Tamara listens. Frankie doesn't give a shit about this podcast. Standard. Doesn't listen. Doesn't Standard. Um, but to be fair, 
I was uh, I was walking down the road to the co-op the other day, and because it was raining and a bit cold, I put a hoodie on. Little did I know that it was my Lannister hoodie. Right. And Lannister is one of the houses from Game of Thrones. And they're pretty widely hated, I think it's safe to say. However, I'm a massive fan of them. I, I've always liked the bad guys. Um, <laughs> and that's because they're, they're, some of their ideals are some of my ideals. Um, I always did like Adolf. <laughs> <laughs> not quite like that. <laughs> I am putting words in your mouth and I a have little no bit. problem with doing it. I know you don't. It's but the internet, uh, everything ends in Hitler. <laughs> uh, well, this is the thing. I walked, I walked up to the car with my Lannister hoodie on and some bloke stops me and goes, oh, you're a right piece of work you are. I went, what do you mean? And he goes, Lannister hoodie. You a Lannister? And I went, oh, yeah, no, I am. And he went, yeah, you scum. And he spat at me. <laughs> <laughs> See, I think that guy is just banter. Either It'd be banter if he didn't spit at me. Did he actually get you? No. Was it he, landed he, by my feet. He probably did that on purpose. He probably didn't want to spit I'd, on you. I'd, I hope not, because that would have been really disgusting. <laughs> That's pretty but funny. I'd, I'm glad you appreciate that. But I, I, at the time, I did bloody didn't. Is it like someone saying they associate themselves with Slytherin? Pretty much, Slytherin. yeah. Ugh. Pretty much. But yeah, not into Game of Thrones, so um, I have no further comment other than... But I do agree with you, people shouldn't spoil anything. Exactly. I, I did make a joke, because I actually went and saw Spider-Man again. I'm not actually going to talk about it, but it is in the right. running order. I went and saw Spider-Man again with my friend Josh, and uh, I was joking around with him. I was like, so there's this really cool bit about Spider-Man, and then I just stopped. <laughs> and he just laughed at me. Yeah, uh, the, we used to have a friend of ours who used to go. This bit's really good. When you yeah, it used cinema. to irritate the living hell out of me. No bad. To be honest with you, the fact that I didn't insert a cold drinks rectangle up into his rectum was quite <laughs> surprising. Because I hate that. There is nothing more irritating to me. Don't spoil stuff on the internet. You, you hear? Pretty much. Um, but do you know what? Do you know what? Obviously, you said you're not a fan of Game of Thrones, so you can't really pass comment. No. Tell you something you are a fan of, though. Hmm? Relationships. Because, you know, you're in one. Uh, am I a fan of them? Yes, you're a fan of them. Just go with it. Um, because, uh, I mean, you know sure, Chris, <laughs> I guess. Yeah, why not? Go well, on. Uh, th- th- see, you, you just literally... If I was actually on a Segway right now, you would have stuck a massive branch through the wheels. I don't give a shit for Segways, Chris. I do. I love them. I don't have to do them here. You know you don't, but I do, because I, I enjoy doing it. Um, Not bad. Yeah, pretty much. Um, no, obviously, as I mentioned earlier, my, my, my good lady friend, Tamara, came down from London. No, and, Dan! And, yes, that one. Uh, and she... You sound like you're from London. <laughs> oh, my God, shut up. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> and, obviously, it was the first time we meeting my parents properly, and uh, my family, and, understandably... I'm sure we've all experienced this at some time or another. Yeah. We all can get a bit nervous about the first encounter. A bit twitchy. Yeah, of course. We just think, oh God, what if they don't like me? What if I don't like them? What if, what if, uh, you know, I say something stupid and they liked me before, but they don't anymore. And all this kind of stuff does run through your head. So after talking to her about it, I've realized a couple of things that can help. Just a little bit with first introductions. Right, yeah. So, do you know what she brought my mum and dad? Go on. She made homemade biscuits that were very, very nice. These biscuits. These biscuits. Ah. Um, that were very, very tasty. And she also brought them a milk tray. Oh. Which was lovely. And obviously, if, 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 if your parents are kind of into food and all the rest of it, that's probably the best way to go about it. Um Everyone's into food. But yeah, well, I, sh- I should hope so, because if you're not, then there's a problem. You're a liar. Exactly. Um, Everyone likes food. But this is, this is the thing. I think there are... Uh, do you, would you have any advice for someone who was, w- would be meeting parents for the first time? You know, the, the biggest piece of advice I can give is be nice. So go in there and just think, I'm just going to be really nice to these people. I'm going to say nice things. I'm going to do nice things. Be yourself. Be funny, but not too funny. You want them to think, oh yeah, he seems like he's well-rounded. Don't, don't, don't maybe... Well, it, the mistake that people make is they go, oh, it's going really well. I'm going to make a joke that's going to push the... Test the waters. No, you wait. Wait on that stuff. Wait on it. Do it in like a few weeks. Yeah. Don't do it on the first time. 
That's my advice anyway. Oh, that's fair enough, because I, I think you, you took the big one for me, is be yourself. Because yeah, yeah. obviously, when, you know, previous relationships and stuff, I, I, I've i gone round, and when I've walked through the door, they've turned to me and gone, oh yeah, right, there's just something I need you to, you know, need you to do for me. Okay, what's that? Don't be yourself. That should have been my first warning, really. But you got to be... I think if you're not yourself, obviously it then comes out. You Obviously, yeah. they will then find out. Yeah, people, that is an, people that find is an inevitability. Out. Yeah, of course. I think being yourself is important. And if they don't like you, I don't like you. Don't worry about it. Exactly. If she likes you or he likes you, that's fine. Exactly. You're you're not being. I think because I think myself and Tamara have had this discussion before. A relationship is between two people, not everyone else. No, that's right. It's not so, business. you know, that's that. That's the only other piece of advice that I could give uh, personally on this kind of thing is keep it between the two of you because you don't you don't need to put it all over Facebook or anything. You don't need to be Instagramming pictures of, oh, of every little event. I would say actively don't. Yeah, I mean, I don't. No, exactly. uh, Frank and I are happy, and we don't because precisely. We have no need to. It's no one else's business what goes on between us. Exactly. So that's that. That's that's kind of the big piece of advice, I suppose, we could give. Really, isn't it? Yeah. Be yourself. Be you. Be chill. Precisely. Try and be. Try and be as relaxed as you can be. People can always tell when you're scared. Yes. Um. With that said, scary things. Um. I've got into words with friends. Oh God, why? What's wrong I ha- with you? I had it once upon a time, and then Frankie and I have been playing it, and I'm playing her friends as well. It's got to that point. Right. Oh, God. Okay, you t- you're you're an old man. Okay. Do you play it? God, no. You should. Not a chance. I'm not smart enough it's for a, it. It's a vaguely intellectual game. Yeah, I just wanted to mention it, that, that I'm clearly broken because I've played Words for Friends. Well, I don't think you're broken. Terrible I just idea. think, honestly, you're probably, uh, you're probably too intelligent. Uh, I know lots of people that disagree with that. <laughs> so do I. But, but yeah, just, uh, just yeah. wanted to mention that. By the way. And I've been playing Splatoon uh, 2. Oh, oh, and how is it? Good. Yeah, it's enjoyable. Good. I've only played the multiplayer. I'm not really interested in the single player. Really? Um, I've been playing the multiplayer and it's kind of more of the same. And you know what? That's fine. Really, that is absolutely fine. More of the same is fine. I've captured some footage off of it, so I might make a little video. Oh, top. But, um, more of the same. Fine. Well, absolutely fine. I don't. I don't mind that. That's that's cool. Good stuff. Um, yeah. Uh, it is more of the same. It's got a couple of extra bits, but I haven't explored them yet, so it'd be kind of wrong for me to talk about them. But yes. it's fun, and I like the fact it's on the Switch. I was able to play it briefly on the train to London the other day. Oh, brilliant. I said the Switch was a hit on the train. I took Mario Kart with me as well, and there's a group of, like, seven of us playing Mario Kart on a train. <laughs> it was a hit. It, That's it, quite it, funny. Uh, honestly, it was, it was like the ads. Yeah. It was just like the ads. It was the same sort of, uh, you know, vibe as Nintendo's advertising which is that's pretty fair. impressive uh, apart from Words of Friends watching Spider-Man again that's all I've been doing this week I've really been uh, busy doing other stuff to be honest with you what have you been up to Chris what have you been indulging in this week uh, well to be fair um, I've been kind of doing it on the similar vein I've I've been quite busy applying for jobs left right and centre um, more so than anything and helping I went and had uh, my sports massage and chiropractic session last night and nice, nice. I spent half an hour trying to help a woman well the the main reception woman uh, sort out her printer because it wasn't working do you know what the problem was? it's a charmer I think no it just wasn't turned on um, how did it take you half an hour to realise that? didn't take me half an hour to realise it I wasn't allowed behind the desk so if I'd walked up and had a look I would have gone it's not turned on but I my couldn't goodness. see it from where I was sat so you know, but otherwise, <laughs> what I have been doing is I've been. Uh, anyone who knows me know knows I currently don't have a phone, and yeah. it is a subject of much much pain and anguish to me um, because I miss having a phone. But I've been using my tablet, and I thought, do you know what? I'm going to go on to Google Play. Other app stores are available. Yeah. Um, and I thought, do you know what, I'll, I'll have a look at the recommended for you section, because I don't play many games on my tablet. I'm flicking through. I saw 
one called Stickman Fight and Stickman Fight 2. I thought, okay, do you know what? I, said, I thought, when I, when I was in school, I used to love Stickman games. They they used to really entertain me, especially, you know, during geography and what have you. <laughs> during um, lessons where you really shouldn't be doing it. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Um, and so I thought, okay, I'll give it a shot. So, I downloaded them. And right. do you know what? For they're, they're very, very basic. They're just 2D. Yeah, yeah. And it's a case of tapping either the left or right when an enemy approaches you to kill him. So it's sort of like a rhythm game, like pretty a, like much a quick time eventy kind of deal. Pretty, pretty much, yeah. That's pretty cool. Um, and but obviously you can pick between fists, weapons. You can give him a cape. You can give him a hat. You can give him. Uh, you can change the color of your stick man to you know because you start off with white. You can be you can turn it black. You can be red, green, brown, blue. All these different colors. That's pretty cool. And it's it, it's it's pretty fun. And I, I played it yesterday, and I went, ah, oh, this is cool. And then I started playing it some more, and some more, and yeah. some more. And I realized, I sat there, but bearing in mind, I went on a little road trip last night and didn't get back until 10 to 3. I realized at the ripe old time of half past four in the morning that maybe I should put the game down go to um, bed and go to bed yeah so I did but it's funny isn't it how mo- these some of these like kind of mobile games and tablet games are, are so addictive and you know and it's so simple as well and it's great what baffles me is that they get frowned upon they do okay, don't they yeah. so you have games like Candy Crush and stuff like that it gets frowned upon but like oh it's not real games I'm sorry it is yeah it's a game it's a puzzle game or it's whatever it's a game. Exactly. It qualifies as a video game. I think they milk people for money, and I don't think that's cool. But it's a game. Yeah. Okay, so people can do whatever you want. Don't judge other peeps. That's exactly. not your position. Well, this is the thing. Cause it's, it's really strange because, as I said, I don't play many mobile games on my tablet or anything else. I don't, but truthfully. do you know what? I find it fascinating sitting there watching other people. Right watching other people play them because you quite often more often than not you can see the cogs turning in their head and I'm just sat there going oh well, I wonder if they've seen that bit no nope, they haven't seen that bit okay I'm not going to say anything though it's their game I'm not going to intrude just the other side of the train dodge yeah <laughs> move out of the way <laughs> Yeah, pretty much. That's the green one. Uh, but yeah, so if you go on to if you go on to Google Play or the Apple Store, yeah, Apple, Apple Store, it's, it's called, st- yeah. Stickman Fight and Stickman Fight Two is probably on. There. Is it free? Yeah, it's free. I'll give it a go. It's free. Obviously, they've got, they've, the got, they've got they've got micro transactions, but you don't need them. Honestly, you just don't need them. I like games like that where you you can if reasonably you finish them without. Yeah, precisely. That's the other great thing about this game. There is no end. It's just constant constant waves of enemies. That's very cool. And the fact that your reactions have to get quicker and quicker and quicker. So when you start, because I, I made this mistake, I think. Yeah. I started and I was tapping away. You know, got to something like 4,000 souls that I'd collected as currency. Yeah. And I then started up another game and instantly died. And the reason being is because I think it essentially... Like, the quicker your reactions are, the harder it will get for you, quicker. Right. So, it kind of, it must use an algorithm or something where it goes, right, okay, last game, they were very, very, very quick. They're probably going to be that quick next time, so let's just start them at the same place. That's kind of mental. That's cool. It's, it's like, how do I put it? It's kind of like the uh, fantasy fight game, mobile game that would be akin to Dark Souls I suppose because Cause there, are is, some, you know. there are some really cool uh, stick fight animations as well oh, yeah, so exactly. it'd be kind of cool to play through that wouldn't it yeah wouldn't it? so uh, that's free yeah, yeah it's free I might give that a go I think you should mate and what else have you been doing Chris I've been spending while well while I've been job hunting and trying to find auditions and stuff yeah I've been watching Hannibal the TV series nice which if, again, if anyone knows me, knows I am a huge fan of Hannibal Lecter. I always have been, and I think I always will be, because I find the character and the story so interesting. Yeah. However, Hannibal the TV series predates the three films starring Anthony Hopkins right. as Hannibal Lecter. Prequel. Yeah, pre- basically. It, it, on the title, it comes up with, um, or, you know, as the program starts, it comes up with, based on the book Red Dragon, which was chronologically the first Hannibal Lecter film 
Okay. So it's got a few notable characters in it that you would recognise from the films. Okay. Um, and they've kind of they've kind of tweaked it a bit so that it's not all about you're not just following Hannibal Lecter's crimes and his murders and stuff. You're following other people and their murders and stuff that are being investigated by um, detectives and the FBI and. Uh, one, one, the well, the kind of the main focus of the program, other than Hannibal Lecter himself, would be Will Graham, who is a special agent, who essentially can. I'm not. This isn't given anything away, but he replays scenes of crimes through backwards. So he almost he almost he closes his eyes and he basically rewinds the scene and then relives it as the killer. So he can work out what's going on. That's pretty cool. And yeah, it's a it's a fantastic series. I can't remember the actor's name who plays Will Graham, but Mads Mikkelsen plays Hannibal Lecter. Mads Mikkelsen. And that man is a god. He is fantastic. I love him. He was obviously in Doctor Strange very recently. He was also in James Bond, Casino Royale. He was. He was in something else not that long ago as well. Where he was really bloody good. Oh, he was in Star Wars as well. He was, yes. He was in... Uh, Rogue One. Rogue One, yeah, yeah. He's, He's also currently in the newest Carlsberg advert. Um, yes, which seems like a, an advert for Dan- Denmark, but it's not. Yeah, it's I, I, a I think it's a shame. Um, but yeah, he is phenomenal. And if you like Anthony Hopkins, um, as far as Hannibal Lecter goes, I think you'll really like also like Mads Mikkelsen because he does the part justice. From an actor's point of view, he really does it justice because he's got the whole suave and sophistication of that Hannibal Lecter should have that you see partially at the start of Red, the film Red Dragon. Right. Yeah. But he bring he just brings something new to it, like the a, a cool. It was almost like a cool. Yeah, I, I don't know how to describe it. He's just he's just cool. Like even when he's you know planning on killing someone he's just cool about it right it's like it's like when I go do you know what I'm gonna go and brush my teeth it's completely normal for him to do this stuff and it's really really good it's really creepy he does a very very good job so if you get a chance to watch it it's two but two seasons are currently on Netflix the flick so, so if you get to have a watch of it I would highly recommend it good beware of gore though there's a lot of gore if so you're not comfortable with that stuff my alleyway. yes indeed um yeah, nice one. I might have to check that out as well. I just wish I had more time. Yeah. Hey, you want to know something? Hit me up. <clears throat> this is a bit of a change of gear. North Korea has suddenly cancelled a popular month-long beer festival for unknown reasons. However, people won't be going thirsty in a country where brews are cheap and carry the ruling family seal of approval. Last year's inaugural festival along the Taedong River was a surprise hit with tourists and Pyongyang residents alike. But these days, North Korea's tourism industry is in limbo following the death of an American tourist and the test of Pyongyang's first intercontinental ballistic missile. North Korea's premier brewery has crafted a new beer for the festival and has unveiled it despite the cancellation. The brewery gave the public first taste to Associated Press report and they found that the brew wasn't bitter but a little flat oh dear uh, last year the country enjoyed its very own Oktoberfest and the pints were deemed to be excellent the beer is relatively cheap costing between 39 pence Oof. and £1.95 still out of reach for many of the country's starving residents but not the elite of Pyongyang I can't believe there's a beer festival in North Korea do you know what I, I have a morbid curiosity with North Korea, so I want to go. Yeah, I know you do. I can't, I now want to go, because if that's how cheap beer is, can you imagine going over there and how drunk you can May get? May I recommend Poland? <laughs> you could recommend it. Cheap beer in Poland. You could recommend it. I've recommended it. Cool. Uh, <laughs> cheap, cheap beer in Poland. And also, it's very cool. I went to Krakow. Very, 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 very cool. Really cool place. Oh. I really enjoyed it. It was cheap as well. I'll do that once I've got a job. Yeah, no, go to go North, uh, North Korea. Uh, I do want to go to North Korea. I don't Korea. know why I want to go to North Korea. You do have a strange obsession with it. Uh, weirdly, yeah. I think it's just because you don't know. Mm. You can't explain it. It's a it, mystery. It, yeah, it's a mystery. So I kind of like that. D- do I really want to go? Probably not. The but I would like to go, if that makes any sense. If someone said, oh, free, it's going to be free. Go to North Korea. I'd be like, okay, fine. Fair. Um, but they they regulate like p- 
pictures you take and you have to be like you're, it's a guided trip so you're not allowed on your own you're not allowed to just wander around mm. which is kind of crazy yeah you have your freedom robbed of robbed from you for a week oh dear basically oh well you're basically a prisoner uh, your choice not mine mate I don't know if I want to do it sounds interesting do it sounds interesting and let's talk about uh, something else I said definitely that lion on the road 25 tons of melting lion bar chocolates has <laughs> sparked severe delays oh by the way that last story is in the metro this one's on Sky News website uh, 25 tons of melting lion bar chocolates sparked severe delays for motorists last Thursday morning uh, the London bound drivers on the A2 in Kent suffered long waits after a lorry carrying the cargo burst into flames near junction for the Blue Water Shopping Centre. Three of the four lanes were shut, blocking a key route from the port of Dover to the capital. The A2 was fully reopened at 2.25pm after fire crews worked with Kent Highways to put out the blaze and remove the chocolate load which had melted onto the tarmac. There are pictures of just like sodden lion bar boxes and chocolate just all over the road that r- actually makes me really sad because I really like lion bars you like lion bars I do yeah I'm I'm quite well, if partial you, to one if you were down the A2 in Kent you'd have been able to nap one I'm I just, sure I, I probably would have dived in save the chocolate save it I, I probably would have hit the pile and just broken every bone in my body <laughs> no, my luck. <laughs> just crunched just into crumpled it. Just crumpled and then melted, like sunk into the melted chocolate. You'd have been a crunchy. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Banter. But yeah, uh, what would upset you if it was if you saw a f- load of it on fire? I think if I saw if I saw a load of uh, obviously animals, that would be sad. <laughs> People, that would be sad. But I mean, like, objects, items. What would, what would upset you if oh, you saw them? Like, that, that, do you know what? That, actually, I know exactly what would make me really sad. Go on. Milk chocolate tea cakes. Oh. Turnox tea cakes. Oh, just a load of them on, on, on yeah, fire would make any, you sad. Yeah, anything. Because obviously, you'd, that, that, the idea of that uh, kind of gives me heart palpitations. I'm really unhappy about that thought. <laughs> <laughs> do, you know, do you know what would upset me? What? If I saw it on fire. I love Oreos. You do love your Oreos. I'd be really upset. Do you know what? Is it bad that if it was Oreos, I wouldn't be that affected by it? Uh, because I, I like them. Don't get me wrong, but I'm not sat there going, oh, I need me some Oreos. Well, this reminds me of, um, cause I was thinking about video games. Mm. There was uh, loads of Amiibos, Splatoon Amiibos that came over, and the lorry load of stuff that was due for game in the UK got pilfered, caught Did and it? nicked. Yeah. Oh. They nicked a load of amiibos. I reckon there's probably a load of dodgy Splatoon amiibos on the market now oh. that have been like stolen. Mm. Mm. And obviously they can't really track them down. No, you can't. And they're, uh, they're just a well, thing well, in the serial market. numbers and stuff on the packaging. No, there aren't serial numbers on an amiibo. They might be on the chip. Yeah, but uh, I don't know how you can really track that. And also, let's say someone's bought it down at a market. That's not fair to them punish the customer, is it's it? It's not, is it? So, yeah, I don't know how that happened. That was a little while ago. Um, but, yeah. Um, yeah. Lion bars on the carriageway on fire. Should we talk about Curious Crow-based content? Yeah, why not? So, adverts by us. <laughs> Your first one went up, Chris. And I have to say, you said it to me. And I was like, okay, what's this going to be like? Like, you know... it. Is it going to be any good? Because we, we think that about each other's stuff. Yeah, anyway. Watch it and we go, is this is going to be a really good one or is this going to be one where Martin's phoned it in? Hmm. Uh, which obviously I don't do anymore. But I used to make stuff and just like phone it in um, hmm. for other people. Um, but I don't do that here. Uh, so yeah, um, what was I going to say? Yeah, so I watched this thing uh, that Chris has done. Uh, Advert for Perfume. It's very funny. Go watch it. Go watch it. It's on the, <laughs> it's on the YouTube channel now. It is really funny. Um, and I like it a lot. It's, a, it's only, you know, 30, 40 seconds. Yes, but it's good. It's all right. And also coming out today is the Fire Unboxing. Indeed it is. Uh, the, the Amazon, Along with this podcast. Yeah, the Amazon Fire Unboxing will be coming out today. It's actually been up for a while. We've been yeah. reviewing it. So we, whenever we do a video, we always send it to the other person. Make sure it's all good. What do you think? If it's like yes, then it goes up. If it's a no, then it yeah. doesn't. Um, so it's been in the review process, but we're happy with it now. Exactly. And uh, it's it'll be uploaded uh, today. So when Ooh. you listen to this, 
it will already be available. Uh, it's an unboxing. It's a really quick unboxing. It's quite funny. I take the piss out of Chris on it. Oh, do you? A little bit, yeah. I say. I must uh, have missed that bit. <laughs> I say, Chris says, I get everything in blue, and today is no different. <laughs> um, because the, the Fire Tablet is in blue. Yes, it is. So, yeah, that uh, that's all done. Uh, we're going to start on the uh, collection at some yes, point soon. Maybe next week I've got some time off. Hmm. Maybe I'll start. I think I'll start with the Sega Master System. Well, this is the other thing as well, because obviously I've talked to you about it, but. Obviously, from at the moment, I have a script in the works for a comedy skit, don't I? You do. A good so, comedy skit. A funny so comedy skit. Maybe keep, but keep your eyes out for that in the, next, in the coming months, because there's a good chance that once it's uh, the script's finalised and checked out and everything, film will definitely be underway, and then I'll be editing. So, oh, you're an actor. Yeah. <laughs> and you're in Hampshire, Surrey, or Berkshire. Crow at no mess 24.co.uk we need to sort that out there definitely we definitely do uh, but email us yeah definitely if, if you're prepared to work for nothing email us <laughs> yeah exactly we, we, I'll, we, I'll provide you snacks we can't pay you <laughs> I'll, you, I'll, I'll buy you some snacks <laughs> okay that's that's what we can do for you we'll, uh, we'll get you some tea cakes we'll get you some tea cakes because they're good that's enough to bait anyone exactly. that's it Chris we are sorted um, um, how do you pay your staff at Curious Crow with tea, tea cakes, cakes. Uh, if you want to be an editor for us similarly uh, we'll pay you exactly. tea cakes no seriously if you want to make stuff send me an email uh, we'd like to I'd like to see what you uh, we'd like to broaden our horizons think. a bit wouldn't we yeah why not we want, we want to get a multitude of voices you want to be a guest of the podcast you've got something to talk about something you want to promote again must uh, set up a new email address for that definitely Will it be a gmail or something yeah uh, sounds good because I keep thinking about getting a website but then it's like ah, it's not really worth it yeah uh, I still have loads of weird website domains sure. under my belt uh, one do. of which doesn't belong to me <laughs> I'm actually looking after my, my pal Josh I'm looking after his website his website is on my that's domain. quite funny very strange uh, so yeah um, that's pretty much it from us this week that is yeah a slightly shorter episode so we're sorry about that we can blabble on for another f- four minutes if you want and just fill it up but honestly you're not missing much uh, anyway this will be uh, as I said earlier on SoundCloud um, and do check out the YouTube channel there's some new stuff coming there is no real schedule the only thing that's scheduled is this I mean this comes out every Thursday in fact exactly. we, we bust our balls to make sure it comes out every Thursday yeah. like it's Thursday now exactly uh, we are recording it on the same day we're releasing so, it which which we don't do every week no and then next week for instance we might record it on a Tuesday or something yeah, exactly. yeah, but really before know. the episode finishes Martin you've got oh, 10 seconds oh sugar to come up with a name okay 10 9 8 7 6 Five, uh, four, uh, three. Splatoon three. two makes a bigger mess than lions in the road. <laughs> <laughs> like that, okay. Splatoon was, two. I need to write that down. Yeah, you are that. gonna have to write that Splatoon down, mate. Splatoon two makes a bigger mess than lions on a road. Than lions in the road. <laughs> Okay, that's not going to fit in the video very well. Uh, anyway. No, well, <laughs> we'll sort it. From myself, Mark Willingham, and from... Me, Chris Borden. We'll see you next time. Bye. Goodbye. <laughs>